بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله يمسيكم بالخير بداية نوجه شكر للدكتور محمود للزملاء والزميلات The presentation we talk about percutaneous device closure of these these second lamb nodules So uh, ASD is the second most common congenital heart disease in adults accounts for 10% of cases 70% is uh, osseum secundum variety. So just to remind you uh, the anatomy, the ASD secundum situated in the fossa ovalis here, and the other, other three types of ASD, the sinus venosus uh, defect, and the osteum primum here, uh, and here the coronary sinus defect, ASD, which uh, the most common is the secundum, which is when we say transcatheter closure, that means the ASD secundum, which is amenable for closure, uh, transcatheter closure. So, in four chamber view, the ASD is situated in the middle of the territory of septum. This is a pathological view where you see the defect in the fossa ovalis. And we have to, we have to say that. Uh, Uh, we, we admit that advanced neonatal intensive care uh, unit, improved surgical technique, early, complete repair, lower perioperative mortality, it will end with increased early and mid-term survival. So we are now facing adolescent and adults with congenital heart defects. Natural history, uh, uh, ASD's diagnosed childhood when untreated, it will increase about 65% of cases. They found only 4% of SDs close spontaneously. Uh, natural uh, right patient significant shunting with large defect may develop right ventricular dysfunction, pulmonary hypertension, atrial tachycardia, embolic events, all of which can lead to significant morbidity and mortality. Uh, in, all, in older adults, there are beneficial effects of closure on first uh, geometry of the cardiac chamber, pulmonary artery pressure, patient symptoms and exercise capacity, the increased myhoc class. So they notice that they appear to be more pronounced if the defect is closed earlier. So indications for closure, presence of symptoms as well as exercise intolerance, shortness of breath, heart failure, or atrial arrhythmias. Two, evidence of right ventricular right atrial dilatation, that's mean uh, of volume overload. Presence of paradox, paradoxical emboli, we, we noticed the more common in PFOs cases. And the last one, documentation of orthodoxia hypoxemia, <coughs> what's that? Orthodoxia, this is Latin word, means uh, hypoxemia. Platypnea means positional dyspnea. They notice that these patients, when they are standing, they <coughs> became symptomatic and desaturated. When they are in supine position, the, their saturation <coughs> comes up and became normal. The, what's behind that, behind that? They mentioned that when they are standing, uh, the defect it stretches. So the, the direction of the flow from the IBC, it goes from the right atrium to the, uh, uh, from the IBC to the left atrium. So indications, uh, guidelines, AC and DHA guidelines suggest that SD larger than five millimeters should be closed, provided that VA pressure is less than two thirds of strength pressure. This is very important. We intend, should uh, the pulmonary artery pressure below, don't forget that. Contraindications, presence of other congenital anomalies like sinus venous ASD, sinus ASD, uh, severe irreversible pulmonary hypertension. Uh, closure device in older patients, a study of three different age group below, four year, below 40 years, between 40 and 60 and above 60 years. They found that undergoing transcatheter closure uh, improved in, in morbidity in all groups with regression of peer pressure with no increased uh, mortality. Independent predictors for moderate severe pulmonary were older age, larger defects, female, gender, and uh, moderate bicuspid regurg. Uh, <coughs> T, uh, we have to look for the rims of the defect. 
Here, longitudinal review, if you go to 100 or 120 degree, you have this is superior SPC rib, this is the inferior rib. These rims should be at least five millimeter and above. What about the other rim? The short axis view, you go to 50 degree. This is the retroaortic rim, and this is the posterior rim. We found between 10 to 20 percent of cases, the retroaortic rim, it's absent, and you can close if, if you have two deficient rims, you can't close that defect. You have to send your patient to the surgeon. If you have just the only retroaortic rim is insufficient, you can go forward and you close that defect. So the history of Cluder, uh, uh, double umbrella device in 83, uh, lock clamshell 90, Sideris button device 90 nowadays, and from 97, we have the Aglasser, we have the Oclotic, we have the Helix. And this is the catheterization, the catheterized upper pulmonary vein. You notice here, this is the lady of a 30 year old with, uh, she has uh, a moderate size AST. We measured the IT, it was 15 millimeter. We inserted a device of 18 millimeter. Firstly, we, we deployed the left atrial disc to the left atrium, then the waist, then the right atrial disc. After that, we, we release that that and you see this is the, the device here. Another case is 50 year old female patient with right volume overload, symptomatic UPQS 3 to 1, peer pressure 55, uh, millimeter mercury, uh, T by T, her ASD was 32 millimeter with good rims, so we decided to go with 36 millimeter oclotic device. We decided to have the oclotic device because the retroaortic rim was deficient and this this device is a, a little bit less bulkier than the Amplasser one. And uh, so we release that, we release, and you see the device here, and under the, after that we did an angio here to check the, the contrast go to the pulmonary artery, the bofilis, this was very, very small shunt through the mesh. By, we, we used to do an uh, TE after uh, you see the device here situated here. Good function, there is no pericardial fusion. We can do color Doppler here. Okay, color uh, to check for if you have mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation in your device, I don't know why it doesn't work, this one. After that, you check the mitral valve. There is mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation, any... Sorry. So, what are specific complications? We have, we have to address four things. First of all, atrial tachyarrhythmias. Atrial tachyarrhythmias are generally quite common among ASD's population and contribute to their morbidity. The most common were atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter. New onset of atrial fibrillation was seen in 20 per 20, 12% of cases. Uh, Murphy and Gasolis uh, found a surgical approach doesn't prevent the occurrence of arrhythmia. <coughs> Uh, whereas atrial arrhythmia is likely a product of chronic atrial dilatation and increased prevalence with age. Uh, Silver Stein suggested that device closure before the onset of atrial arrhythmia may protect against subsequent arrhythmia, mainly in patients less than 40 years. Silver side found it suggested that device closure physical before the onset of atrial arrhythmia may protect against subsequent development of arrhythmia, mainly in patients less than 40 years. In one surgical series, comparing adults with ASD with, with medical management showed that they had the same rate of late atrial fibrillation. The above data suggests that transcatheter closure is likely more protective against the development of atrial arrhythmias than surgical closure. Presumably, we assume due to lack of pericardiotomy and atrial scar. So, uh, in a pro prospective study of 200 adult patients referred for SD closure, 20% had atrial tachyarrhythmia, 
uh, atrical tachycardia detected in 16% of patients in late follow up. Taken together, message a benefit in arrhythmia by closing defects at a younger age. So, the second complication wall erosion. The most serious and life threatening complication with the closure of devices, atrial roof wall erosion, which leads to tamponade. So, sorry. Uh, wall erosion. The authors recommend the following modification to decrease <coughs> the rate of erosion. Don't oversize the device. Judicious patient selection. Be careful if you have absent aortic rim with flail, flimsy, mobile, posterior rim. Use gentle motion during the Minnesota wiggle. Minnesota wiggle, when we put the device, after that, we have to check before release the device in place. We do forward and backward. This is a Minnesota wiggle. You have to be gentle. Understanding that aortic rim absence alone without oversizing will not result in erosion. Third, acute pulmonary edema. Schubert reviewed the pulmonary edema data. The high growth group was older and higher mean LA pressure. So uh, uh, my message for you before closing any device, any ASD defect in adult, do hemodynamics. If the left atrial pressure and diastolic pressure is high, don't close that defect. Otherwise, you will be in great trouble. The other one factor is mean peer pressure was uh, 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 26. Acute pulmonary edema, pre-procedural anti-congestive therapy. Some authors, they start with inotropes, marinone, dopamine, diuretics, uh, before planning for closure. The fourth complication, thrombus formation. It was seen 1.2% of cases. For this reason, we keep these cases on antiplatelet therapy for six months time. And during procedure, we, we heparinize them in order to keep the INR around 250. <coughs> Post procedure, atrial fibrillation and persistent atrial septal aneurysm are significant predictors for thrombus Formation. Maybe in such cases, you may add clopidogrel in addition to aspirin. And in conclusion, device closure of ASD has been proven to be a safe procedure. Compared to surgery, long-term <coughs> outlook of device is promising. Improved <coughs> outcome, lower complication rate. To further minimize long-term risk and complication, continue long-term follow-up beyond five years is important, perhaps every five years. Mentoring of cases by experienced physicians. Careful patient selection based upon learning curve is recommended. And thank you. Thank you.